Hello everybody, Jen Ferguson here with Artistic Painting Studio and I am super excited to be here again tonight with everybody. So I am going to uh, see if we're live. There we go. Takes Facebook a second or two to catch up with us. And I am going to go send out a text message to our texting club and let them know we're live, okay? So if you want to be in our texting club, you can um, text that phone number at the very top of the description of this video and just type the word alerts, okay? Plural or non-plural. <laughs> and um, you will get entered into our uh, texting group where we just send you guys out reminders that I'm going live or that I am live and we do all kinds of other fun things on there as well. Sometimes there's special deals that only the texting club will know about. So it's worth joining, finding out what you, what what possible specials could be, okay? So Desiree, hello at Faye, <laughs> thank you guys for joining. Maddie, it's so wonderful to see you as well. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you guys, it feels so good to sit. I have been on my feet for almost the entire afternoon. I was really disciplined today and made sure that I got back here and that I was finishing up and working on uh, the finishes that I am doing in my painting group. So normally every other month or so, I take two, three, four, five days, however long it takes, um, and I uh, develop the finishes and make the samples that I'm going to be teaching in my painting group. So it's everything, okay? Um, from working with uh, specialty crackle mediums to working with our foils to doing multiple layered finishes, working with metallic paints, textures, stuff that you can apply to your furniture, your home decor, your crafts, and even your walls, okay? So if you're looking for a real creative home to hang out with some amazing people, you should check out the painting group, okay? I think if you just type in painting group into the comments, I think maybe a link will be sent to you. If not, I'll send the link to you, okay? So hello, Sherry. It was wonderful to talk to you today, and thank you for the stars again. Hello, Diana. Barbara's in the house. Mary Jo, Pamela, and Teresa saying Merry Christmas. I know. We're almost, almost there, okay? <laughs> um, so, yeah, as we get ready for Christmas, um, we will be here for Christmas Eve, um, hanging out with family. And um, Christmas morning, we're going to depart. We're going to hop on a plane, and we are going to go somewhere warmer <laughs> um, and hopefully enjoy uh, like four days, four or five days. Let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, well, our travel days are Saturday and Wednesday, so we get three full days there, three and a half days basically, because the day you're coming home, you're doing nothing but packing, getting your stuff together, and going to the airport, so... Um, I'm excited. I'm ready for some warmth. I'm ready to leave my Uggs at home and go someplace hot. It's not as hot as I had hoped it to be, but 80 will do for right now, okay? Um, so last night, I showed you guys how to use our heat transfer vinyl adhesive, and I did my apron, okay? So you can see that I got the word believe on my chest here. Um, a good good word for the season okay believe we, we have to believe in a lot um, and then I wanted to kind of cover more ways that we can do our fabrics because we truly do have four four different adhesives that are designed for fabric two of them can be used kind of universal but I want to cover another one tonight and um, I'm covering one at a time. Tomorrow night I'll probably cover the last two because they can kind of go both ways. I'm grabbing my product. Okay, I want to make sure. Yeah, okay, I do have a full can here. Um, and that way I can just kind of go through different ways you can use these, how to use them, how to be successful with them. 
um, because it just opens up our um, our surfaces that we can work on because with being able to foil on our fabric there's a lot of things we can do and um, one of my retailers posted a picture of one of her customers that actually foiled her ribbon so she had like I want to say three inch ribbon and she foiled it and oh my gosh it was amazing it was red and gold and so pretty um, okay, so I am going to go back through and look at, I've got a question here from Teresa, and Teresa says, as promised, <laughs> she was promised me she was going to be full of questions, okay? If I wanted to foil a canvas, what do I need to do, please? Um, and I want to welcome Cecilia. Thanks for hanging out with us from Oregon. I hope your weather has been nice there. Okay, so if you're wanting to do like a stretched canvas, and um, you want to use our regular good old let me see if I got a little bottle here I think I do I think I do um, our regular foil adhesive under our Artsyville embellishments will work on canvas um, you can paint on your canvas you can foil on your canvas you can put textures on your canvas you can do so much on canvas okay but this is the foil adhesive that we work with on there so just apply it and allow it to dry for at least an hour and you can transfer um, and you can apply the foil adhesive in all kinds of different ways. You can sponge it on, you can brush it on, you can roll it on. I mean, you can do an awful lot. So um, have fun with that. And again, another great question. Um, hello, Debbie. Uh, Debbie's from Ohio. And thank you, Debbie, so much for the stars. We got two Debbies back to back here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we just shipped off, I think, at least two orders to Ohio today. Um, I don't always do the shipping um, because you have to delegate, okay? And if you don't delegate, that means you can't come back here and be creative. So I have a wonderful staff, and normally they handle that. But we're short one of my team members for today and tomorrow because she has something else going. Uh, so I am picking up the slack, okay? So that's why I noticed we had Ohio on the shipping. <laughs> Um, hello, Joanne. Okay, so Teresa says, perfect. Thanks. Wasn't sure if I needed to do the textile way or not. No, normally a canvas, so your stretch canvases are normally primed, which means you've got paint on there. And I'm not thinking ironing on that is going to be a great idea. Okay, we kind of touched on that subject last night a little bit. Um, and almost everybody that does canvas, to my knowledge, is using our regular adhesive. Okay, so let's get going here. Teresa, I'm so glad you made it as well, and Merry Christmas. Okay, so I've shared a little bit about, I didn't say where I was going, I just said I was getting on a plane and going someplace warm for Christmas. Um, and the only reason we can do this is we have six children between Dan and I. Yes, I said six. We have the Brady Bunch. We got the three girls and the three boys, okay? Um, but they're all grown adults, okay? They're not young children anymore. Um, and we had them almost all. We were missing one uh, for Thanksgiving, and that's kind of like our tradition is we try to gather them for Thanksgiving and have a week with them if possible, or at least as long as they can come and join us. Um, and that's the time that we take, um, and that's kind of been our tradition so that at Christmas time, um, they can go do whatever they need to do. They can go be with other family members. They can go be with the other side. They can go if they have to juggle, you know, his and hers or whatever they need to do. We just didn't want to put any pressure on anybody during the Christmas holiday. Um, but we always say our house is open if you are going to be around. And none of them were. So we booked plane tickets. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Uh, hello, Michelle. I'm so glad that you're able to join us. Michelle is one of our stockists over in the UK, and we are thrilled to have her on board. She is, oh my God, this girl's jamming. I'm telling you, she's doing some incredible stuff over there. And um, she even has her own page on Facebook. It's a little group that's all about foils as well. And I think it's called Fancy Foils. Am I right, Michelle? Write the name in so I make sure I'm sending them because we have our we have a group as well that's called Foil Everything. And we've got like 
going on, I think, like 5,000 people in there. So it's all a place where you can talk about foils, you can show off your projects, you can ask questions, you can help each other. I mean, it's, it's a great forum. But Michelle has created one for the UK as well. So we're really, really thrilled about that. Um, okay, so let's get on to fabric, okay? And I'm going to introduce you to another medium that we have that's a foil adhesive um, that is great to work with stencils. So this is called our Deco Foil Fusible Spray Adhesive. And you gotta shake it. You gotta shake this stuff really well. Shake it for at least 30 to 60 seconds, okay? And that's longer than you think it is, um, but you wanna shake it really super well because if you just go and then try to use it, it's just not ready, okay? So make sure you shake it really well. Um, let's see. She said yes, years, right? Huh, I'm not sure. Years. Oh, was that supposed to be that's right? <laughs> I don't know. You lost me on that one, Michelle. Um, okay, so I have got a stencil here, and I'm telling you, it's a dirty stencil. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sprayable uh, adhesive, okay, for fabric. It gunks up your stencil. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you guys. It does gunk up your stencil. But what I have found is if I just leave it and let it dry, and I don't want to make a mess on top of my fabric here, um, I can just get in here and I can actually just scrape it off. So you don't have to do that with your fingernail. You can get in here and you can scrape off that whole layer once it's dried for several days, okay? So don't feel like you have to get in there and wash this off right away, um, it's not going to hurt it. You can eventually scrape off um, all of this stuff off the top. But I have several layers on here right now, so it's kind of thick. Um, oh, yes, we do have another one. And, um, Michelle, we're going to cover that one tomorrow. Okay, so today I just wanted to kind of talk about one product because I think sometimes it can get confusing. I want to open my or change my angle on my camera there a little bit, you guys. I'm cutting off my head, but I want you to see what we're working on, okay? Um, so I think it's always kind of easier to talk about one product at a time. That's why when I did my apron last night, I only talked about the heat transfer vinyl adhesive and how to do it, how to work with it, all the ins and outs, um, because that way you really learn how to use something. Um, so tonight we're on to spray. And tomorrow we will talk about the other two products that we have that can be used for fabric and hard surface, okay? So they are interchangeable. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is grab a stencil design, whatever design you want, okay? And take it outside and spray it with this product that is a repositionable spray adhesive. It's not a permanent mount one, you guys. You don't want permanent mount spray adhesive. You want repositionable. We have that on the website so you can find it. And then you're going to put your stencil onto your surface. And you need that spray adhesive on the back because you've got to make sure your stencil is stuck down, okay? Because you're gonna be spraying over this. And if your stencil is not stuck to the fabric, the spray can get underneath. So that is the main reason, you guys, that you need to use the spray adhesive. Oops, I got all kinds of things sticking here. Hello, Terry, and welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so once I have it on there, I'm gonna take tape, and I'm just gonna create a wider border, okay, because we're spraying this on, and I don't want it to get anywhere else, okay? So make sure that you're creating. Now you can do this a couple different ways. I use tape. You can also just grab um, a paper towel and even like get it underneath, underneath, okay, the stencil, so that when you're spraying that direction, that whole area is covered. Um, but however you want to do it, just make sure that you're creating a larger barrier, okay? So now your stencil is stuck into place. We have it taped off so that when we're spraying it, we don't want to get over here <laughs> or over here or anywhere else, okay? So now I'm going to make a lot of noise, and I'm going to shake this for about 30 seconds. Um, 
And I want to say it takes probably a little practice with this product because when you're spraying something, um, it's hard to get it completely even. And you don't have to have it even, but um, you want to have as consistent uh, coverage as you possibly can. I mean, I'm getting up just because it's going to be easier to spray than while I'm trying to sit down and do this. So I like to get over the top of my product, okay, my project. And if you want, you can just test, okay? But you're basically just going to spray over the opening. It's going to go white. And that's it. You just want to make sure you got all the openings sprayed. If you see something that looks really, really red, okay, or whatever color your fabric was, then spray some more. Um, and then just put your lid back on. Uh, take your tape off. And we're going to remove our stencil because you don't have to leave your stencil in place. And if you want it to, you could go back and clean this off, or you can do as I have indicated, and just let it dry on here and scrape it off later, OK? <laughs> OK, now I can sit back down. Um, so you can tell that we, I'm going to hang this up, so give me just a second here. Um, we have our stencil on our surface. It looks beautiful even as it is, okay? And we need to let this sit for about 10 minutes, okay? So you're going to spray your surface. Um, and believe me, I've got areas that are thicker and thinner, okay? So that's fine. It's going to happen. There's no way you're going to have an even hand and get it all the same um, thickness, okay? Um, but you want to let this sit, so I'm going to double check what time it is and make sure that I don't hit this too, too fast, okay? So while we're waiting for this to dry, um, I'm going to talk more about it, plus I am going to go back to uh, questions and comments and read a few of those as well. So hello, Crystal. It's wonderful to see you. Uh, <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for wishing us a wonderful trip. We are very, very excited. We're actually going with another couple. Um, you know, as you get older and your children are grown, um, some couple trips are just wonderful, okay? <laughs> oh, and Michelle says she always stands and never sits when she's doing projects. For the most part, I have to stand. If I'm just painting on something small, I can sit, but when I'm getting my furniture and I'm up and down and in and out, that's what beats me up, okay? Because you can only bring your furniture up so high because you also have to get to the top of it. So you've got to be at that where you want to get it up high enough that you're not like sitting on the ground because I'm too old to sit on the ground, um, <laughs> but not too high that you can get to the top of it. So this table is a permanent table at this height, okay? I can't adjust this table. It is a four by eight table that is sturdy as can be. So I really can't move my furniture up on top of this. Not unless I want it to just work on the very bottom half. Um, so I am, I, I do a lot of everything, okay? But today, because I was working on nothing but finishes, so I was like, you know, over on that section doing something, coming over here, filming everything. I, I was moving around all day. I was all over the place, but I was standing for the most part. Um, hello, Vicki. I'm so glad you're joining us. You sound like a newbie, and welcome. Um, so Terry's asking, have you ever used the spray on a stencil that is sticky and has mesh openings? Oh, so you're talking about um, those reusable stencils that are sticky on the back. And they basically have, like you said, a mesh opening. Um, I have used them on hard surfaces with um, the regular foil adhesive. Okay, they work great. Just clean your silk screen fast, okay? Don't let it sit. Get back there. Use a little bit of soap and water and clean it off. Um, 
So I've used them that way, but I've never tried to use, we've got a little guy flying around here. I've never tried this over those. I just don't know how it would work. I, that silk screen, you can push product through it, but I don't know if you could do this one. Um, the product that we're going to test tomorrow, maybe I'll grab one of those types of stencils and see how it works because we're going to try a different product tomorrow, okay, or I'm going to introduce you to another product. So I should, um, yeah, silk, silk screen stencils is what they are. Uh, and you know what, let me grab one right now because I don't want to forget to try that tomorrow. Uh, let's see what I have. Uh, I used to play a lot with these chalk couture stencils, okay, um, but we really don't use them much. Um, we actually were involved with this at one point in time, and they didn't like you using any other product but theirs with them, so I decided it wasn't for me, okay. I don't like companies that try to dictate to you what you can and cannot use, okay. So we have some of these still laying around. So I have that hanging to remind me. So we'll definitely check that out, okay? Um, let's see. So Terry, I'm on that tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Hello, Linda and Kathy. Nice to see you. Sheila, thanks for joining us. Um, So Vicki saying the stencils for acrylic paints mostly. Um, you want a traditional stencil uh, with using this. So a traditional stencil is going to be a, a stencil with openings and you can spray this through it. Um, like I said, tomorrow we will test one of the silk screen stencils on fabric using another product. Now I know that we can use them with our Artsyville foil adhesive, but this is designed for hard surface, not for fabric. Um, so they will work for those. Oh, I know, Sherry, it just opens up a whole nother world of using your stencils, okay? I've used this one a lot on clothing, and I absolutely love this one. You're welcome, Terry. I'm, I, I love the questions because it just gets everybody's minds going. You guys are all creative, okay, that are in this community. And um, I love it when you have those questions because it's like, oh, I have tried it with one product, but I haven't tried it with the other product, so we'll get a chance to check it out. Um, Crystal says, oh, I have a friend who makes those type of stencils using icon art. Is that what it's called? Icon Art System? I need to try using foil adhesive. Yes, they will work. Um, Nora Page. Nora Page, you can never, ever go wrong with Nora Page, okay? <laughs> um, this one here is Hampton Medallion, I believe, okay? Uh, yeah, it's the Hampton Medallion. Um, I love this one. It it looks great, okay? I, I don't know if I've got any of my jeans here, but I'll check tomorrow, so I'll show you guys what I've done. Okay, so we still have a couple more minutes, uh, but basically the spray can go through any stencil. Um, and let me grab a pair of jeans because I think it will help to explain what else you can do. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Oh, I do have a pair. Oh, different stencil though. Okay. Sherry's going to love this because um, they have Nora Page on them. Okay. <laughs> so a different stencil design, but um, this is what I've done to a pair of jeans. And I just used a stencil and just kind of angled it. And I angled it on both sides. So um, these are definitely blingy. Let me look at what size these are. That always tells me why they're here. Woo! <laughs> I ain't getting in these anytime soon. <laughs> um, so they're wonderful for working on your clothing, okay? Uh, so that's for the Nora page. But what I was going to tell you guys about the spray. So 
let's say that even you want it to do the whole belt loop. Well, you could tape off the whole belt loop and you could spray that, okay? If you want it to do a whole pocket, you could just tape off the whole pocket and spray that whole area. Um, so there's ways to use the spray other than with a stencil, but mainly I do use it with the stencils. Gosh, this girl has got to lose some weight so she can wear all of her clothes again. <laughs> One of these days, okay? I was talking to a friend the other day, and um, we were talking about jeans and um, that I can't wear half of my, I can't even wear a third of my jeans right now. Um, but I can't stand to buy the next size up because I'm bound and determined to lose the weight and to get back into my jeans. But I do own more pairs of jeans than most people should ever own, okay? <laughs> but I think part of it has been hand-me-down. Whenever my daughter gets rid of anything, she always asks me if I want it first. So I've had a lot of my jeans for 10 to 15 years too, okay? <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, we're getting closer here. So basically, use your stencil design, spray through the design. Like I said, if you want, you can go clean your stencil right away. It's just going to be just as easy to clean it later, okay? So just let it set. Um, and then I picked our Bailey's flowers, which I love using um, with a stencil because you just see, instead of seeing a floral print, um, you just see random color, okay? So that is really cool. Okay, I'm also need to turn my iron on, okay? So I'm turning my iron on to medium heat. Don't ever go above that, okay? Um, if you're not sure how hot your iron is, then make sure you use some parchment paper as well. So you'll have your stencil design, you'll put your foil over it and put parchment paper over the foil and iron on top of that, okay? Um, oh, Ellie, you're so, so welcome. And I'm so glad you are hanging out with us tonight. Um, you always can go watch from the beginning and catch up, but I am showing the deco foil fusible spray adhesive through a stencil and I did this like 10 minutes ago which you have to wait at least 10 minutes for it to dry you can wait longer okay so it's not like you have to wait 10 minutes and do it you just have to give it at least 10 minutes to dry um, thrift store yes I need to go to the thrift store that's where I found some of my other jeans because when you work at a studio that deals with paint and plaster, you ruin your clothes. So I have a tendency to go to the thrift store and buy jeans um, and different part, different clothing, shirts and jeans, because I'm going to ruin them here. Okay, so I don't want to wear my good stuff. So that has always been my go-to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my foil over the design. I'm going to check and see how warm we are. And thank you so much for the sprinkles, you guys. They are so appreciated. So if y'all want to go hit your share button, go right ahead. Share it to your own page or go share it directly with a friend. Invite somebody to come join us. It's always fun to hang out with more friends. Um, yes, it does slide over the parchment paper really, really easy, okay? Um, I got another question. Cecilia, can you use a Cricut mini heat press instead of an iron. Yes, you can, okay? Um, so if you have a heat press, um, you definitely can use your heat press. Um, if you don't own a heat press, the iron works just as good, okay? Um, and let's keep going here. Okay, Joanne sprinkled for us. Thank you. Okay, I know I'm past my 10-minute mark, and I think I'm hot enough. So now I'm just going to iron. And I'm on a hard surface, you guys. I am not on an ironing board. I am on a hard wood surface. And I highly recommend that. Do not try to do this on your ironing board because it's not, um, you can't push as hard as you need to push. And I feel like I'm almost too hot tonight. You know, I'm going to go grab some parchment paper because the last thing I want to do is scorch this. Um... So I want you guys to know where all my parchment paper is. It's here at work. The other day when I was trying to cook, I was looking for parchment paper, and I'm like, oh, 
I need to buy another roll for the house, okay? <laughs> so the parchment paper is going to, again, like Sherry said, it just glides over it, but it's protecting your foil. So no matter how hot your iron gets, you're not going to scorch anything, okay? Always keep your iron moving. Don't let it sit anywhere. Use some pressure and push. And I like to do this for at least a minute or so, okay? I just want to make sure that I've pushed on every part of the design, that I've had enough heat transfer. So what we're basically doing is ironing the foil, the metallization, onto the stencil design via that spray adhesive, okay? And whew, once you're done, we're just going to let it sit, okay? All your foils, when you're using a heat press or an iron and you're working on fabric, you guys, they're all what's called a cool release. So don't iron this and immediately go pick it up. The only thing I will do sometimes is I'll just kind of like grab the edge and lift it very gently and you can feel that it's stuck, okay? That's perfect. You also can see the whole design through the, um, the foil, okay? I don't know if you'll be able to see it through the camera, but I can see the actual stencil design. So you normally can tell that you are completely attached to the pattern. Uh, but you have to be patient and you have to just like wait. Okay, so I'm going to turn my iron off so I don't forget uh, to do that. Um, Desiree, thank you so much for the stars. Um, let's see. <laughs> so Sherry said, sprinkled with a heart. And there's 40 of us watching. If we all shared, what a great gift for Jen. Oh, that is so sweet. Okay. And I'll tell you guys, your shares are what helps us to reach so many other people. So we do truly, truly appreciate them. So just share to your page, share to your friends, yeah, share if you can. <laughs> uh, so Sherry says, I scorched the shirt, not the foil. Oh, okay, you got to be careful, okay. Um, but medium heat, so make sure that your iron is not any hotter than the fabric can handle, okay? So check the heat setting for your fabric too. Um, parchment paper will save it all. Um, like jeans, jeans you can go all the way to high, but I wouldn't do that without a piece of parchment paper in between, okay? And I wanna keep the parchment paper off because I want this to cool off. Terry, thank you so much. So appreciate that. We love those sprinkles, girls. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, um, if there's any other questions regarding fabric, I would love to answer those. And in the meantime, I have a styrofoam half ball, okay, that's been sitting around here for days and days with the foil adhesive on it, so it's nice and sticky. Okay, see how sticky it is? Um, <laughs> And I want to get this foiled, okay? So this is what a lot of my friends that do wreath making use these for the centers of their, uh, their wreaths, okay? So this is a really, really cool thing to work on. Oh, here's a good question. Okay, let me pull back here for a minute. Um, Mary Jo says, I am enjoying watching you as I am prepping foil foiling projects for my little girlfriends who are coming tomorrow night. Oh, that is so sweet. A girlfriend party uh, there's nothing better okay so we're talking some fun surfaces to work on everybody could bring their own project you have the foil adhesive on the foils the wine is flowing or whatever beverage you like to drink I do like my wine um, and what a great idea okay just hang out with your girlfriends have some fun and foil some stuff together I love it um, okay so Shelly is asking how do you launder Great question, okay? Um, it's advisable to go inside out. So turn everything inside out before you throw it in the, in the washer. Cold water. Um, gentle cycle if you can, but I want to tell you, I've thrown my, my jean shorts 
I think are the pair that I have worn the absolute most because they fit. Um, and uh, I have just thrown those in the washer I don't know how many times. Okay, so I try to always go cold water, but they have to be lined dry. Okay, do not go into the dryer. They're not going to weather well through the dryer. So um, you will find some of the foil probably will come off, but if you do cold water, uh, gentle cycle, um, everything seems to come out really well. If I forget and I just throw it in with the regular load uh, and I haven't turned it inside out and I just put it on regular or whatever, I mean, after a while, a little bit of the foil comes off. But to me, I just feel like I'm starting to get like a distressed look. It doesn't take away from it, okay? It just makes it look cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Cheryl, thank you for the sprinkles and the Christmas tree. Um, can you do all synthetic material? No cotton at all. Um, this is some kind of synthetic material. Have no problem with it, okay? Um, I have done a lot of cotton, a lot of linen, my jeans. Um, I think I would just test a small spot if you could um, or just give it a shot and see. I haven't found that it's not adhering to any fabric that I've tried, but good question, Sherry. Um, Says, do, do not forget you are washing a foiled shirt and use bleach. Oh, so Desiree is kind of giving you a little tip and trick. So obviously she bleached a shirt that she foiled. So how did it come out? I, I'm curious, okay, because bleach is harsh. Um, she, Shelly, you are more, more than welcome. Please keep the, keep the questions coming, you guys. These are awesome. Okay, so as we're talking fabric I want to go ahead and do this okay so this is a real smooth styrofoam half ball okay and this only works on the smooth ones I always suggest base coating it Bondego is really good or good quality acrylic paints put your foil adhesive on and let it sit overnight you're going to have your best results and now 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 we've got to find oops. Okay, we got a pile over here, and stuff is just flying out of my pile. Let me see what I have that I got enough of back here. I gotta have a big enough piece. Uh, okay, this will work. We have looks like twinkle gold. Okay. Um, Oh, so Desiree says the foil is almost all gone off, off of the adhesive. Okay. Desiree, I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but I would take that shirt and I would see if I could transfer foil again to it. Not put any more foil adhesive down, but just see if you can transfer. So I would go ahead and iron on it again and see if it works. You know, it might, it may. Okay. So now we know that the foils do not like bleach, okay? <laughs> so we're, we're getting more and more information here. Um, hello, Tanya. It's great to see you. Oh, yeah, somebody did foil ribbon, okay? That was really, really cool. Um, what about net or tool? Um, you'd have to try, okay? So I know that the ribbon they did was like three inches wide. It was a red ribbon. And they used gold um, foil. So it came out beautiful. It was one of my retailers. Okay, I'd have to go and find the picture. I think it's probably in the foil everything group. Um, so if you search and search, I'm sure you're going to find it. Okay. Um, yeah, try it. Okay, because the time that I scorched the um, foil when I had the iron on way too hot, um, and it scorched it and it was like all gone okay and I felt I, I just had ruined the whole project I basically just tried to wipe off all the foil that was scorched and not adhering put a fresh piece of foil over it and it went right on it worked beautifully okay uh, let's see what else am I okay I think I'm caught up caught up here okay but this is great you guys uh, be careful with bleach. <laughs> okay, I got a sticky table here. Okay, so this is gold twinkle foil, okay? 
and I'm just going to push it down over this foam half ball, okay? And you buy them like this. You buy, you can buy the half balls. And I'm going to grab a scrub brush. And basically, I'm just waiting for that to completely cool off. But I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, before it gets ruined, just sitting around here and gets dusty, let's go ahead and transfer. And I can get another thing done. <laughs> and I'm telling you, this will go on anything, okay? This gold twinkle is such beautiful foil, it will blend with anything I decide to use it with. So this was a great choice. Okay, so once you're scrubbing, just start lifting, okay? If you see that you missed an area, put your foil back on and scrub again. If you've got wrinkles and crinkles, which you're going to have because there's no way to put it completely smooth, okay, when you're working on something that is round. But you can always go back with a piece of foil that still has all the metalization on it and do what I call backfilling or filling in, okay? So that will adhere to all those little open areas where my black paint is still showing. And I have been foiling on some different colors lately, just kind of playing around with some different projects that I've been doing back here. And I have to tell you, I still like black better than any other color. I mean, you have to test. You've got to figure out which, what is the best color to go under each foil. But uh, I tell you, sometimes I try things and I'm like, oh, I think I would have liked that better with black under. <laughs> so here we go. That is done, okay? So I would still put a top coat over the top of this, protect it, okay? So if you're doing the styrofoam half balls for a reef, then make sure they are the very high quality, they're the more expensive ones that are very smooth. I would put Bondego down or another really good primer paint, okay? A good high quality acrylic would work. Um, make sure you put on your foil adhesive and let it set overnight before you go and transfer and you should have excellent results okay because that is almost like a hundred percent that was fun <laughs> there's just so many things we can do it's unbelievable okay so let's come back to this um cecilia is saying can i use any acrylic black paint um you pretty much can but the higher the quality normally the better and I'm going to tell you guys why, okay? So if you're just using a craft acrylic and it doesn't seal, um, like give you a sealed surface, if it's porous at all, that means your foil adhesive is going to soak into it. And if your foil adhesive soaks in, it could soak in highs and lows, okay? So if you are just using any acrylic paint, try two coats because that's going to give you a better, even coverage and... Um, hopefully your foil adhesive will not soak into it at all because we're uh, bleh. the reason I love Bondego so much is Bondego creates a sealed surface. It was designed to uh, apply like a faux finish over so that your glazes would sit on top. So all your products sit on top and don't soak in. So I feel like my foil adhesive always works the best over Bondego. So just do it a test, okay? You could even grab a great uh, just you know stir stick okay you could grab a stir stick you could put your paint on your stir stick and you could test right there and make sure it's working well um, because I want everybody to be as successful as possible now I have used um, chalk paints but I don't always get a great transfer over them because chalk paints are porous so um, an acrylic like um, general finishes is a good one to work over. I've had great results over that. Um, and any kind of acrylic that is like a good quality furniture paint would also work really well. So just test, okay? okay I know I'm, I'm teasing you guys here, but I'm gonna zoom in. Um, let's see. Okay, so Tanya, um, when your instructions say wait one hour, that is this product right here. This is our regular Artsyville foil adhesive. Um, 
all of our fabric adhesives work completely different and there's written instructions on the website for each product. So if you clicked on the deco foil and you go to the fusible spray adhesive, there's written directions on that page. You can even download and print them. Okay, Each of the fabric foil adhesives work different. Um, not everything has to have an hour. Okay, That one only has to have 10 minutes. Our regular foil adhesive that we use on all of our hard surfaces, okay, this should go for at least an hour. But there's no limit to how long you can leave it on there, okay? If I leave something overnight, I think it just works better. Um, and I got a lot of people that are firm believers with me because it's allowing it to dry really super hard, firm tack, and that's going to give you the best release. But an hour is like minimum, okay? Um, and we've waited an hour or less, and we've had great results. Um, styrofoam, again, is a little tricky, okay? Um, plastic, glass, metal, all of those are a little bit trickier surface other than wood. So if it's just like a, um, let me grab this one if I can reach it, like a wood birdhouse, okay? Um, a regular... A, Acrylic paint would work fine on this, I'm sure. And an hour for the foil adhesive would probably be fine, okay, as long as you are in a dry, warm environment. Um, all of those things play into how long you need to let it wait. I'm just finding that we're cold right now. It's averaging between 40 to 60 degrees from our high to our low. We live close to the beach, so there's always humidity. It's always kind of a damp environment here. Um, and I allow things to dry longer because of those things. Um, so depending on where you live, if you live in Arizona and it's hot and it's in the middle of the summer and you have zero humidity, uh, you could probably foil within 30 minutes. So I hope that helps. Okay, I don't want anybody to be confused. Um, so yeah, Tanya, if you're doing your projects on wood, I would still give it an hour, okay? Let, make sure your paint's really dry. Don't put your paint on, wait 30 minutes. Put your foil adhesive on, wait 30 minutes, okay? Everything is still wet. Nothing has really, really dried well, okay? And you could end up with issues. So I put my paint on. I like prep a bunch of things at once when I'm working. Um, that way my paint can sit there and dry for an hour or two. I put my foil adhesive on. It can sit there and dry for an hour or two. And then I foil, okay? Or sometimes I don't have time. I can do all my prep ahead of time. I can do my base coat. I can do my foil adhesive. And I can foil tomorrow. And um, I don't have to worry about it. Oh, let's see. Uh, Sherry, is this what you're looking for? Oops, sorry. That's the Deco Foil Fusible Spray Adhesive. You'll find it on the website, okay? Um, let's see. Teresa has a long one here. She says, I used acrylic paint on a glass vase and it did not work. I did the foil adhesive on top of the black acrylic paint. When I applied the foil and tried to take it off, after I brushed it on, it pulled everything off, including the paint. Uh, I was back to a clear glass again. Okay, so when we're doing glass, you guys, um, we're using Bondego. It's a primer paint. It's not a regular paint. So we have the black Bondego, we have white, we have canvas white, and we have clear. Um, but when we're going to glass, going to plastic, you guys have got to use a primer. Those are surfaces that are never, ever meant to be painted, okay? Nothing should adhere to it, okay? Um, so we have to go above and beyond. So if you go to glass, plastic, metal, I think those are pretty much all of our other surfaces. Um, extra prep and primers are highly recommended, you guys. Highly recommended. So prep could be that you have to sand, possibly. Um, you have to clean it. Make sure there's no oil. So like even 91% um, or higher rubbing alcohol works great to clean a surface off. And then the Bondego, I allow to dry overnight before I even put foil adhesive on because you're trying to get that primer to adhere. Um, now, if you don't want to get Bondego, there are other good primers out there. Just get online, check and see what they'll adhere to. Some of them will adhere to glass really well. Some will adhere to, adhere to metal. Um, if you're going to use a spray, Rust-Oleum 
2x, okay, um, has a pr that's a paint and primer in one and works pretty good as well. Um, just make sure that that's basically on plastic wood and glass, and they have a lot of specialty primers. Um, so I try to make sure I'm using a primer that's going to adhere to the surface, not just black paint. Um, so I hope that helps, and I'm sorry that you experienced that because it's no fun, okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to release this, okay? I'm going to zoom back in and show you guys how gorgeous this looks. We have waited way longer than we need it to. Okay, now I'm finding that it did not adhere everywhere, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to turn my iron back on. And um, it adhered really well here and there. It did not adhere in some of the other spots. So I'm going to leave it, okay? I'm turning my iron back on, and I'm going directly onto the foil and not use my parchment paper, okay? Um, and I, I've always said, if it doesn't adhere the first time, if you find an area, you can either, if you don't find it until you've, like, pulled everything, you can definitely go back and, and spot that area in, but make sure you don't iron over the foil that's transferred, okay? Um, so, like, if, if something had not adhered, let me um, open my screen a little bit. So, if something had missed on a part of, like, the L, okay? and I didn't realize that until I pulled all the foil off, then I would have to put another piece of foil over that section, but I would put parchment paper over everything so that I was not ironing on any of the foil that had already transferred to the surface because that is not a good thing. Okay, so um, there are times, okay, that for whatever reason I didn't have my iron hot enough, I didn't press hard enough, I didn't iron long enough, something, something went wrong, okay, because I had adhesion in some spots, but not everywhere, okay, so again, I'm just going to iron. When you are not successful the first time, you just try, try again, okay. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay, now the white Bondego, Teresa, is um, tentable, so you can tent that other colors. I would suggest tenting it with a colorant over another paint because colorants take such a little amount of product to tent it that it doesn't change the property or compromise the adhesion of the material, okay? Now, um, so, Teresa, are you working on hard surfaces? And because I just want to say white is not my favorite color, okay? Okay, so I think I've ironed this to death, okay? We're hoping. Because I'm a pushing and I'm a getting this nice and hot, okay? Ugh. Um, okay, I'm going to turn this back off. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're using it for the clear base. Okay, what foil are you going to use? Which color or pattern? Um, white is not my favorite color underneath most foils, okay? Um, it makes it look spotty, not distressed, if that makes sense. Um, uh, Shelly? You don't have to put anything over it. Once you transfer the foils to your fabric, there's nothing else to do. Um, okay, Desiree says, we have all had these kinds of learning experience. <laughs> she says, when I did my glass base, I did leave it overnight for the paint to dry and then overnight for the foil adhesive just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm an overkill probably when it comes to prep, but I like to be successful in the end, so I tend to let everything dry a little bit longer, okay? Um, and I'm glad, I, I love it when things don't go perfect. And I'm very, very honest about that, you guys. Because I would not have been able to show you this and tell you what to do if it had perfectly released. So it's a good thing when things don't go 100% right when we're on a live because these 
are the learning experiences that I get to teach more about the process, okay? And I'm going to tell y'all, there's nothing perfect about FOILs, okay? Just be prepared that you're never going to get 100% transfer, that things might just kind of go wrong, they might not transfer as well as you want, um, but like I said, one of the main reasons I like black underneath is because I'm going to show you the front of this birdhouse, okay? There's a lot of black peeking through, um, but I feel like it just kind of looks distressed. It does not look like uh, we didn't get a great foil transfer. Um, so that is one of the reasons, and even on the back is the same, okay? There's a little bit of the black showing. Um, so that is one of the reasons I like to use the black, but I always suggest make a sample board. Um, even if you just got a piece of trim, a piece of scrap wood, anything, paint whatever colors you think are going to look great underneath that foil and test all of them. And you just can make a little strip. You don't have to make a big piece. Okay, you can just make a little strip, like a one inch strip of this color and this color and this color and this color. Transfer your foil over the top of them and you'll go, oh my gosh, that's the color that looks the best underneath. Um, just that easy. Um, oh, Teresa says I've used oil slick looking, looking one, but I used all of it and pulled off and got thrown away. So now I have more foils coming soon. Oh gosh. Okay. So yes, oil slick would look best over white or a pastel um, and possibly it would be really cool kind of cool to try it maybe over the clear Bondago. I'll have to look and see if I have any more glass vases. Okay, the ones that I have up here are done, but I might have some other glass. I would love to try the clear Bondago and do one of the oil slicks over that and see how it looks. I think that would be another great idea. You guys remind me, okay? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, was it? Um, is it Dory? Dora, Dora Ann, Dora Ann, I'm hoping I'm not hacking your name, Dora Ann, the paint sticks, okay, I mean, we all have tons of paint sticks, we even have um, brush handles, I mean, your chip brushes have a big handle on them, I mean, I will test my colors and foils on anything, okay, it doesn't have to be an expensive piece of wood, you don't have to, like, you know, use something that you're going to be using for a project later, okay, so I'm just picking up my um, my fabric because I know when I do this it helps to cool it off a little bit okay <laughs> um, Pamela oil slick is just a name of one of the foils um, the oil slicks and Ohana's are all very very transparent uh, I don't think I have that sample anymore okay I'll have to do another sample um, but they're highly influenced by the color underneath so they're transparent enough that if you paint it green or blue or pink, you would actually see those colors through the foils. I'll have to look. I'll look underneath and see if I have um, a sample of that. Oh, great idea, Sherry. Sherry's always full of some great ideas. The Dollar Tree craft st sticks would be wonderful. Uh, Oh, okay, Teresa, we're trying to get all of the products into the 10 ounce as well, okay? Um, we've got, I think we've got the black, the white, and the off-white and the 10 ounce. We just need to get the clear into the 10 ounce as well. I know some of, I'm one who, I would never buy anything normally under a quart, okay? I always wanted a big size of everything. I want quarts and gallons. I don't want to run out. But I have to get over that mentality that not everybody is working on a big project or working on a hundred projects, okay? So we'll definitely add that to the list and we'll, we'll put it in the 10 ounce for you, okay? Um, okay, I love these questions, okay. Mary Jo says, I got cream colored pumpkin candle on clearance that I'm leaving cream and foiling over. We will see how it comes out. Okay, so this is a candle, okay. I'm just going to guarantee you. Do I have my candles? I do. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that this one I did not prime. Okay. 
you can see we got some big areas where it did not adhere. But for the most part, it wasn't too bad, okay? Now, I've never tried to foil adhesive over these and refoil again, but realize candle wax is a resist, okay? That nothing really should stick to it. Now, another one I did. Oh, okay, let's don't ruin my display here. Um, I thought I had primed underneath one of these, but I'm not seeing that. Okay, but this one here is so cool. I hope you guys can see this well. So I foiled over the candle, and then after that, I put our our crackle finish over the top. So it is just beautiful. But again, it did not adhere everywhere. Okay, I got big spots that it didn't adhere. But um, this one, I think, I think I might have put Bondago under one of them. The Bondago did help, okay? So um, I would try Bondago on it versus not putting any primer down. Um, <laughs> Teresa, that is perfectly fine. I understand. The court says the court is a huge commitment, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to catch up here. Um, Maybe I'll try the oil slip candle. Okay, I don't know what an oil slip candle is, okay? Oh, the oil slick on your candle? Ooh, that would probably be really pretty. Sherry says she used oil slick on her snowmen. Yeah, she did um, She did Florida snowmen. <laughs> um, oh, the, uh, yes, over white oil slick and Ohana is perfect, okay? Um, I'm doing a, a distressed look over the candle, so I'm going to crinkle the foil and dab it on the candle. Oh, great idea. Make sure to post that one and foil everything, okay? Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in, guys. Um, well, that was a bad zoom, but I apologize. Um, <laughs> we're, we're zoomed in now, and we're going to look and see how we, we've done. And it's looking really good this time. Okay, so the first time, either I didn't iron long enough, it wasn't hot enough because of the parchment paper, or I didn't press hard enough, okay? But we now have 100%. So it came out amazing. There's 100% coverage, and I'm so, so glad it didn't work the first time completely because it allowed me to show you guys what to do. Okay, don't fret if it doesn't um, adhere everywhere at first. That just means it wasn't hot enough. Um, and don't go too hot, okay? I, I didn't go above medium, but I went directly over the foil without the parchment paper, okay? Um, and maybe Sherry had her iron hotter when you're over parchment. Um, and then being on a nice hard surface, okay? Um, Terry, this is just um, some canvas, uh, light, like cotton fabric, okay? I actually used uh, our rollers on the other side. I actually, I painted the fabric too, okay? So it didn't come this color. I painted it this color. Um, and then I used our rollers on the other side. I was going to make a pillow with it, but you can see I haven't gotten that done. But isn't that beautiful? This is the um, Bailey flowers, okay? And it is so, so pretty coming through a, a stencil. Oh, thank you, guys. Um, so please, don't feel like you've ruined something. Don't think that your project is lost, okay? If you don't have full adhesion the first time, okay, it is just one of those three, three things. Iron a little hotter. Iron directly, well, I should say iron directly on the foil. Still keep it at medium heat, okay? Um, and longer and press harder, and you should be fine, okay? Um, so, isn't that beautiful? This would be so pretty on a shirt as well, okay? You guys, there are so many fun things you can do. So now I could finish this off and actually make a pillow slip covers, which I need to do. I need to make some for the river house because... Um, I don't like the ones that are on the pillows right now. They're, they're kind of scratchy feeling. They're not like a pillow you want to cuddle up with, so I need to make some. Okay, guys, I am going to 
call it quits. This has been absolutely fabulous. I appreciate each and every one of your questions because I think we all learned a lot tonight, okay? Um, tomorrow night, I'm going to, again, stay on fabric and introduce you to the Deco Foil Gel Duo and the Liquid. And we'll do some fun things with those as well. So, y'all, have a blessed evening and many, many thanks for the stars the shares, and just for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow.